Good morning, Every Nation family. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Danelle and I'm going to be sharing the message for this morning. I um, just want to say for those of you who are watching through our YouTube channel, or you may be listening to our audio that is made available on our different social media platforms, welcome, welcome, glad that you, you could join us. The title of my message this morning is looking at God, looking at money through God's eyes. And really, I just, I just want to say that I myself haven't mastered or I'm perfectly, I'm not perfectly living out some of the things that I'm sharing, but I'm on a journey myself. And some of the things that I'll be sharing is some of the things that the Lord has been teaching me throughout this journey. When I was preparing for this um, message and through my prayer and my quiet time, one of the things that the Lord said to me personally was that, do you know, I want to break that old wine skin, that old mentality, the old way of looking at money and thinking about money, because I want to prepare you for the blessings that I have ahead for you. For you. And, and I felt like God was saying, I want to pour a new wine into new wine skin so it can hold. I want to give you a new mentality so I can bless you. And really my, my heart this morning that is that you could take this, so is that you would take this for yourself as well, that God will just break all that old mindset or that old way of thinking and looking at money so we can be blessed, so we can be a blessing to other people and so that we could be a generous people. Now, um, before I, I start off and get into the message, let me just pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that you could use me as an instrument to speak to your people. Lord, I pray that Holy Spirit, you would do something this morning that you'd break, Lord God, those strongholds, those false ideologies, that false perspective of what money is. I pray that you'd give us a fresh and a new perspective, that Lord, you would help us see money through your eyes. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So two points that I really, really want to cover in this in this sermon um, or in this message is the danger of not seeing money for what it really is. And secondly, a Christian perspective of money. And as I've already said, I'm going to be sharing some of the things that the Lord has um, been journeying with me in this in this time. And so, yeah, two two things that I want to sh I'm going to share the danger of not seeing money for what it really is and a Christian perspective of money. So the danger of, of, let's start off with the danger of not seeing money for what it really is. And the scripture reading for that will be 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. We're going to be on 1 um, Timothy the whole time for the sermon, so just stay there. So 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 to 10, I'm going to read it in the NIV, NIV. It says, For those who want to get rich fall into the temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Point that I just want to make, number one, is that when you don't see money for what it really is, you can easily be trapped by the love or the lust of money. I'm going to say that again. When we don't see money for what it really is, we can be easily trapped by the love or the lust of money. Now, the thing is, it, it's, it's not that money is bad in itself. It's not that money is either good or bad in itself. Money is a resource, but the love of money, that is the trap. That is what, what, what traps us. That, that is what leads to evil. The desire for more, the itch, you know, for more, you know, that, that, that excitement or that satisfaction of knowing I have more money, I can get whatever I want. That is the love of money. That what's that's what traps you to loving money more than anything. And really, there's no telling to what sin a person can commit for the sake of money if they love money to that extent, if they love money to that degree. Guys, and, and, and having money is not wrong. Um, having being rich doesn't mean you're ungodly. The Bible has many um, rich people that God used. Abraham, for instance, King King Solomon, um, King David. These were rich men of God. These were men that God used them in, in to achieve um, great things. But really, a heart should be like the psalmist heart in Psalm sixty-two verse ten, where it says, "If riches increase, do not set my heart on them." 
I'm going to say that again. Psalm 62 verse 10, it says, If riches increase, do not set my heart on them. Oh, that is lovely. I love it. Um, second point that I want to make is that if we don't see money for what it really is, we become unstable. Sad, so sad, and this is very close to me. It's very personal. It's almost like I'm preaching to myself because this is my experience. Um, and I'm gonna just share what I mean by by unstable. So for me, it's been it's been like, oh, if God provides uh, financially for me, then He loves me. Or if He answers a prayer which is related to finances, He loves me. But when I don't have money, um, or when when I don't have more than what I want, then God doesn't love me. That is a wrong perspective, and that's a perspective I've had for a long time. That is a wrong perspective. Guys, your net worth has nothing, has nothing to do with your self-worth. I'm going to say it again. Your net worth has nothing, nothing to do with your self-worth. And I can imagine this being really hard to grasp because it's, it's, it's counter-cultural to the society that we live in. We live in a society where people like Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, Mark Zuckerberg, they're primarily known for their net worth. They're primarily seen as somebody because of how much they earn. But guys, in the kingdom of God, it's not like that. It's completely, completely different. Your net worth is not not attached to your self-worth. Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter, sorry, Luke chapter 12 verse 15 says, then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possession. I'm going to read it, possession, sorry, I'm going to read it again. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of positions of possessions again your net worth is not 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 connected to your self-worth it is not your identity your financial status does not determine your identity and i really love if you read the scripture further um this um luke chapter 12 the scripture luke chapter 12 if you read further down i just love how how it just even sounds like jesus is is, is bragging he says Look at the birds of the air, the ravens, these birds, they neither toil nor reap, yet I take care of them, yet I'm able to provide for them. How much more of value are you to me? How much more will I provide for you? I feel like that that is beautiful, that Jesus, you're saying, I'm much more of value than the birds of the air. Surely, surely my value, you attach value to it, surely I'm more precious than the birds that you're able to take care of me. Guys, <laughs> I cannot overemphasize this. Your net worth, your net worth is not, it has nothing, no correlation whatsoever with your self-worth. Your self-worth is found in Christ. Thirdly, when we don't see money for what it really is, we become selfish. Life becomes about me, my needs, my money, what can I buy with my money? It's all about me, me, and what I can get. You remove God out of the picture. You remove God out of your money. In fact, you remove God out of his money because it's his money in the first place. But we don't see it that way. It's all about me, 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 me. And I think, you know, this is what Paul is talking about here. You know, it's just this is the wrong perspective of money, this love of money. It's, it's a trap of foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destructions. This is what happens when we don't see money for what it really is. And the last, the, the, the verse 10 of, of, of the same chapter, um, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, of, uh, verse 10 says, and this is in the message translation, it says, the lust of money brings trouble and nothing but trouble. Going down that path, some lose their footing in the faith completely and live to regret it bitterly ever after. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Lust for money brings trouble and nothing but trouble. Going down that path, some lose their footing in the faith completely and regret it. Very every after ever after sorry beloved it is shrewd 
the love of money is cunning it's deceit deceitful it is deceitful but then second point that that i want to make a christian um what is the christian perspective of money how should we look at money as as, as christians and again we're going to stay on the same chapter um first timothy chapter six and this time we're going to go a little bit back in verses six where paul says to, to timothy but godliness with contentment is of great gain guys when we have a proper view of money we become content when we have a proper view of money we become content as a christian when it comes to money our goal is godliness and contentment and if you're trying to figure out what that looks like for you what that means for you think about this for a moment what comes into mind when you think about your finances what comes to mind when you think about money you know do you need more of it do you think i need more of it i could give more of it if I had more of it, I would buy this and that. I need a raise. I need an increase. Or do you think, I actually have enough. I'm okay. I have enough. It's fine. I would say no to an increase. It's fine. How many of us think like that? I mean, yeah, I'm just going to let you guys think about that for a, mo for a moment. Godliness and contentment. That's the kind of mindset we need to have. This is a frame of mind which is dependent, which is not dependent on material things and money for happiness, satisfaction, and security. It's dependency on God for all those things. It's knowing that God can meet our deepest, deepest desires, that everything we need is found in God. Romans 12, uh, Romans 12 verses 2 says, Do not conform to the standard of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of, a, of your mind. Like I said, this is counter-cultural to the society that, 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 um, that we live in that tells you constantly you need more, you need more. But the Bible challenges us, guys. It challenges us to be transformed, transformed by the renewing of our minds, to seek a godly perspective over money, to see money the way God sees it. It challenges us to live our lives through the lenses of God, through what God says, through his word. It's not only about money, but it's allowing God to, to help us see everything else different, every aspect of our lives differently. Secondly, when we have a proper view of what, when we have a proper view of money, we realize it does not belong to us. It's kind of hard, right? It's kind of hard to, to think about it. I mean, I'm thinking it's in my purse, it's in my wallet, it's in my bank account with my name on it. Surely it's my money. But it's so sobering that the word of God says in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, we brought nothing into this world. We can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content. I think um, Job... Uh, Job puts it nicely when he says after he lost everything and he says I can naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will live this life guys it's not gonna matter you're not gonna carry all these riches to heaven it's not gonna matter no one is even gonna remember that you, once upon a time you 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 had an abundance of of, of money so it's useless to love money more than you love God it's useless to love money more than you love people love god more than you love money love people more than you love um money use money and not people and thirdly um a point that i want to make is that when you have a proper perspective of of money we have an eternal perspective of eternal perspective of it an eternal perspective of money is realizing that money is something of value in this world <laughs> i'm gonna say that again an eternal perspective of money is realizing that money is something of value in this world but it does not have so much value in the world to come money is a precious commodity in this world but in heaven the bible talks about how the streets in heaven are paved with, with gold we just did a wonderful beautiful powerful series on the book of revelations and if you read 
Revelations chapter 12, it talks about the new heaven, the new Jerusalem, where the streets are paved with gold. I don't know about you, but when I think about that, I'm like, actually, money is not that much of a bigger deal. If one day in heaven we're going to be trampling money under our feet, it's not so much of a bigger deal. But you know what? The problem is that we want to live for now. You know, we want to live for now and what we see. We forget that there's eternity to think about. I'm really challenged by this um, quote by J.I. Packer, who was a theologian, and he says, each day is a step closer to eternity. Each day is a step closer to eternity. And if that is our mindset, if and that's if the, and, and if that's how we look at even money, every day we're gonna remind ourselves that it's not gonna matter to where we are going because we know each day is a day closer to eternity. We just see that it's not gonna matter, it's all gonna end in this world. Guys, we need to be okay with not having everything that we want. We need to be okay with not having everything that we want or we become a slave to our desires. We really become slaves to our desires if we're not okay with not everything, we're not, with not having everything that we want. In closing, I just want to read um, same chapter again, um, same, same chapter again, 1 Timothy chapter 6. And um, I will read verse 17, 18 and 19. And it says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth, which is, in, which, is, and which is so uncertain, but put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up their treasure. They will lay, they will lay up treasures for, for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. I love this verse because it talks about um, rich Christians. So it, it just tell, shows you that a community of Christians does not uh, consist of people who are poor, but there's also the rich. And I love how it it does not condemn people for being rich. It does not condemn them. For, for having money, but rather it instructs them how to use their riches to glorify God. It says, don't be arrogant. Don't think that because you have more money than another person, you're a better person. But it just challenges people, uh, challenges the rich to, to, to be generous, to give, to give freely with what they have, to bless others because they are, being, they are blessed to be a blessing. It instructs the rich to hope in God not in their riches because they could be rich today and poor tomorrow. Literally, they could have money today and it could be gone tomorrow. The only certain thing in this world that we have is God. And really, I'm, I'm encouraged, guys. I really am encouraged to, to say, God bless me. Lord, really bless me so I can be a blessing to other people. Bless me so I can be generous. Bless me, because clearly in the scripture it, 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 it shows or it says that it's more blessed to, to, to give than to receive. More so in the more so in this world, but also not only in this world, sorry, not only in this world, but also in the world to come in eternity. It's more blessed to give than to receive. But also I want to charge you guys to just take time during this week in your quiet times, in your prayer times, just to really think about what false idea, what false perspective do you have about money and, and, and how the word of God can come in to counter that and how the word of God can come in and speak truth to that. And sometimes it's not that we don't have biblical knowledge about money. Sometimes we really need to ask ourselves the question, of what is hindering me from living out biblical truth when it comes to my finances. And I'm just going to be a little bit vulnerable here and, and, and share a bit about my perspective, the perspective that I used to have about money. I used to think to myself, yeah, yeah, I, I know, duh. I know that money should, should not be the source of your happiness. That's like Christian 101. I know that. Until I got broken, joy was a battle every day and I had to fight for joy until I was broke and the fight for joy became real. I used to think, yes, I know that, yes, I know more money will not solve my problems. 
until I saw each and every single situation or each and every single problem in my life as a money problem. Not even as a, as a thing that I can pray about, but as it's just money. It just needs money. Something was wrong, guys. Something was wrong. My perspective was not okay. And you know what, guys? It's, it's, it's really hard to, to sometimes see that the only poverty we have in this life is a relationship if it is is, a, is is not to have a relationship with God the only poverty that we have in this world is not to have a relationship with our God with, 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 with Jesus that is poverty that is being poor but if you have Jesus you have everything but it's also hard to grapple with it and and, and make and and understand that God is enough and I'm, I'm gonna challenge you this morning. I'm going to challenge you this morning. I know I struggle as seeing Jesus as enough. I know I struggle. And as I've said in the beginning of the sermon, it's that not, not that I've gotten it all right, not that I've, I've gotten a red mark on it and said, ticked all, all boxes. No, this is a journey. This is a journey. And every time I have to bring it to God and be like, God, check my heart. Check my heart with money. And that's what I want to challenge you guys with this morning, to bring it to God. To bring it to God and say, Lord, give me a new perspective. Give me a fresh perspective of money. Help me see money the way you see it. And I, in just in closing, I just want to pray for us as a church. And then I'll just pray for those of you who want to, to um, uh, make a commitment to, to having a relationship with Jesus. Um, let me just pray for us as a church that we may get a fresh perspective, a, new, a renewed perspective of what money is. Father, I just want to pray for your church this morning. Thank you that you are the one that gives us a fresh perspective of money. Thank you, Lord, that you shape us, God. I pray that would allow ourselves to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, to be transformed by the word of our, our by the word of God. Father, I pray that we may love you more than we love money. I pray that with my love, we may love the giver more than the, the gifts, Lord. I pray that we may see you as our source of provision and money is just a resource. So Father, I pray, I pray that we may be able to behold the beauty of who you are, God, the satisfaction that is found in you, God, the riches of having you as our Father, of having a relationship with you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that you would renew our perspective, renew us afresh, God. And I pray, God, that you would bless us as a people, bless us so we can be a blessing, that you would teach us to be generous and to, be, to, give, to freely give with what we have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sorry. Also, I just want to pray for, for those of you who want to make that commitment, and as I've already shared previously here, that the only poverty in this world is not to have a relationship with Jesus. That's that's poverty. And I just want to pray for you if you want to make that commitment. Um, yeah, so Father, I just I just pray, Lord God. I just pray for whoever's listening right now who who's who's needing, Lord God, of just a, a walk with you, a relationship with you, who's curious, who's who's hungry to know who you are and to make you as their Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord God, that you'd forgive their sins, Lord God, and just root them in into your family. Wash them, Lord God, and set them free, Father, from 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 um from sin, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, thank you guys for, for for this morning's service. And I just want to leave you guys with a one small group question. And that question is: what needs to change in how you look at your finances? What needs to change in how you look at your finances? Have a blessed Sunday, everyone, and thank you.